Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Government has finally started to push back against those who blame renewable energy and independent power producers for the current woes at ESCOM and in the electricity sector. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the latest developments. Hi Terence. Hi oh, Energy Minister Jeff Khadebe has moved to set the record straight on the effect of IPP costs on ESCOM. Yes, there's this storyline that's developed since about April last year when the 27 renewable energy projects which were held in abeyance for three years uh, owing to Eskom's refusal to sign the PPAs. Um, it's, it's emerged that uh, IPPs are to blame for Eskom's financial crisis and this, the story goes that Eskom is having to pay 2 rand 22 cents for IPPs and it only gets 89 cents in the tariff and no wonder it's in financial crisis. But if you look at the tariff me setting methodology, the total cost, the full costs of those, both the renewable RPPs as well as the open cycle gas turbines are fully catered for in the, uh, in the methodology and there's been a full pass through of those uh, costs uh, that are incurred by Eskom uh, and they then pay, pay the, uh, the RPPs. So there's actually no money uh, in the tariff that is not covered uh, for the IPPs. There's been other elements in the tariff that may not have been covered, and those related to the issue of um, uh, coal and diesel costs primarily, as well as uh, what uh, the regulator has approved for other operating expenses. But never have, has the regulator refused to give uh, the ESKIM what it's asked for in terms of IPPs, and if it has overspent, then it's able to recover it in the regulatory clearing account. But that also has never happened really because um, Eskom has generally recovered more from the RPPs than it has spent. So this whole story around the RPPs being the responsible for uh, Eskom's financial crisis is misleading, it's false, it's a lie, but it's gained a lot of traction, especially on social media. And uh, if you really look at what Eskom's problems come down to, it really boils down to uh, the performance of the build program, specifically Madupi and Kusile, and then the performance of the coal fleet. But it really doesn't come down at all to the, the RPPs and their costs. Is this message likely to have any impact? Well, I think the, uh, the, there's this feeling that the RPPs are expensive. Now, this was a policy adjustment made in 2010 to the Integrated Resource Plan. And uh, th this was to pre start bringing in, in uh, renewable energy into the system. I'm not, not really talking about the diesel, the, the two p diesel peakers, which are also very expensive, but we know that those are really flexible generators and they, they're there as backup and they are always going to be expensive. So when we procured, especially in 2011 and 2012, we possibly bought too, too much capacity too soon. And if we had waited a little bit, uh, the tipping point was reached during that period and both solar and wind uh, prices, solar photovoltaic and wind prices in particular have collapsed. And if, you were to, if we were to have procured the, uh, and actually bought what we procured in 2015, uh, we were buying uh, uh, solar photovoltaic and wind at around 62 cents a kilowatt hour. But if you look back to those 2011 and 2012, solar was very expensive, over three rand a kilowatt hour, wind was in the one rand 50 range to start with. So you can see it's been a, a massive decline. So that is a problem and is an overhang. And adding to it is the, the problem of who some of the black economic empowerment partners are. And one in particular is Patrice Motsepe and his company, African uh, Rainbow Power and Energy, which has become a, a sort of bone of contention because obviously his pr the president is his brother-in-law. Jeff Kodebe is his other brother-in-law. And the feeling was that uh, this, these projects were only approved because it's family connections. But these all predated, uh, those projects all predated Sir Ramaphosa taking over. What happened was there was a three-year hiatus in Eskom actually signing those deals or a delay. And uh, so that is, so it was just uh, Jeff Kodebe coming in to correct uh, the decision uh, not, to, not to build, which was a counter to South Africa's energy policy. So he corrected that, uh, that what turns out to be a policy mistake, created huge amounts of uncertainty, delayed a lot of investments, delayed projects that would have been producing right now while we've got uh, uh, shortages of supply given the performance, poor performance of the coal fleet. 
So whether this lands, it's not clear, but it's definitely, uh, I think, part of a process of trying to correct, correct the perceptions that are, you know, are sort of flowing quite strongly, especially on social media, but also increasingly on in the formal media, that this is um, just a family affair. It's, un it's really a, a design to weaken Eskom and to replace Eskom with private RPPs. The minister also made an important announcement about government's approach to the expense of early renewables plants. Yes, now, <coughs> as I said, they were, are expensive, though, especially the ones procured in 2011 and 2012. And uh, th there was a feeling, or there was a, there was a comment made in a parliamentary portfolio meeting, committee meeting, by Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon, that perhaps these would be rene renegotiated. Um, Minister Khedebi made that clear this week. That is not going to be the case. South Africa has no intention of renegotiating the RPP con PPAs that were signed back in 2011 and 2012. But it did leave the door open for some sort of renegotiation, a bottom-up process. So government won't come with a stick, but has, has, has allowed, left the door open for RPPs to approach uh, the minister and maybe look at ways of what he describes as refinancing. Now, one of the creative suggestions that has come forward is that some of these might be the value could be created by extending the time horizon for some of these RPPs, especially the solar photovoltaic and concentrated uh, solar power plants, which are really at the heart of the, the higher tariffs because wind, when we procured it, was never over two rand. Um, it was always below that two rand mark. So the, the real problem in the system is the CSP plants and the early uh, solar PV plants. If you extend that term by 10 years, value is created. And the way to the RPP could pay for that value is to give some immediate relief on the tariff. But obviously, that's something uh, with, uh, as the minister said, that uh, bridge will be crossed once they come to it, and they haven't come to that yet. But at least there is some creative thinking. I think from a reputational perspective, it would be good for the RPPs to be able to lower those tariffs. Um, and uh, from a government perspective, it would also be good to be able to show to the consumer as I said at the right at the beginning, this doesn't affect Eskom, it's, it's cost neutral to Eskom, but it does affect the consumer that we're paying higher tariffs and to show that, that there's some, um, some creative, creative juices flowing in terms of dealing with the high costs of the early renewables. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.